Hi folks, how are you doing? In the fourth round of Norway Chess 2015 we saw, of course, again we saw very interesting and good chess um, we saw more than one uh, decisive result uh, well the venue was very interesting in this round they were playing in kind of a old church if you can look up for pictures of this round it was quite curious to see them playing in such an ancient and special building and in this uh, beautiful location, uh, the last contenders for the World Championship, uh, Magnus Carlsen and Vichy Anand, played once again. Uh, they were paired in the fourth round and uh, Anand had the white pieces and the World Champion was black. Uh, let's see what happened, the game was really interesting. Anand chose again 1e4, in this tournament he's opting for the King's Pawn to open his games and Carlson goes for the real Lopez as he usually does against 1e4 but in this occasion he gives the Berlin with knight e6 uh, a break and goes for the classical a6 closed real Lopez so we saw very normal moves bishop a4 knight f6 castles and after bishop to e7 and plays the trendy d3 defending his e4 pawn and now he is threatening really to win the e5 pawn by taking on c6 removing the defender of this pawn so um, against this threat black has two options basically to defend um, e5 with d6 which is what Carlson played or to uh, play b5 well they could uh, transpose easily but uh, there is some quite uh, nice theory on this on these lines uh, remarkably there is a, a good series of videos uh, on chess24.com by Peter Svidler uh, on this line with d3 this d3 root opus but okay c3 was played uh, yeah quite typical we black wants some time uh, white wants some day to play d4 also creates a room for the bishop very typical maneuvers and ideas in in the closed Rui Lopez for the closed Rui Lopez we're going to see in this game knight bd2 rook to e8 rook to e1 again we see this typical idea of knight to f1 probably to g3 b5 is played and the bishop goes right away to c2 I mean, putting linked on b3 would make and uh, wouldn't make much sense as Black could attack it with Tempi here, attacking it again and as usually White doesn't want to lose this special and very valuable White uh, Bishop, Light Squared Bishop, Spanish Bishop is called we put it on C2 right away. Bishop F8, once again we see very typical ideas for the Ruy Lopez, for the closed Spanish G6 Bishop G7 is very uh, very typical here the rook is al already playing on the e file and knight f1 we saw g6 h3 oops h3 uh, to avoid this pin to avoid this bishop from uh, coming into this diagonal and well forcing it to go to b7 which isn't that bad of a place either and after knight g3 uh, we're already on move number 13 um, but here Carlson goes knight b8 uh, not a strange maneuver at all this is the basic idea of the Breyer variation of the Rui Lopez black relocates the knight to d7 to keep defending e5 but well it's not on the way kind of on the way which uh, the knight was in on c6 uh, d4 and knight to d7 now we see the knight keeps defending e5 but moves like c5 are possible uh, and the bishop is uh, more active on the diagonal not uh, being blocked by his own knight a4 once again we see very instructive ideas in the Rui Lopez this is something white very usually does trying to open up the position also on the queen side with a4 create a weakness possibly on b5 try to look for something here with the pawn structure Carlson replies c5 d5 c4 um, I think this is very well known theory of, of the Breyer Rui Lopez I remember vaguely to have seen this in a couple of games uh, where black uh, white chooses to close 
uh, the center with d5, then black plays c4, the knight possibly comes to c5, etc. This is heavy theory of the Spanish. Anand plays bishop g5, bishop g7, queen d2. Still, uh, curious enough, everything, uh, every single piece and pawn is still on the board, nothing has been exchanged yet. Uh, rook to b8 quite normal I guess to put the rook on the potentially open b file knight h2 another interesting idea we see white hints on the possibility of playing f4 maybe and even knight g4 putting more pressure on the pin knight and bishop c8 uh, well you don't have to be afraid of undeveloping pieces this bishop was doing close to nothing here looking at the a uh, very solid pawn on d5 from b7, so we go to the other dia diagonal where it could be possibly more effective, more useful. And on the other hand, we give uh, freedom to this rook on b8 to be active on the b file. Knight to g4, putting more pressure here. Knight c5, and here we reach kind of a interesting moment uh, in the game, already in the middle game. Uh, here knight h6 check is played by Anand, uh, correct move apparently, as the computer says, uh, as well black here has at least what would lie, uh, would seem to me like an uncomfortable choice, well of course uh, going to h8 not a great option as we have this uh, simple fork, but here Carlsen chose to take on h6, which obviously weakens all these dark squares around his king quite a lot. Uh, I would feel very uncomfortable with this, but maybe it's not that much, I don't know, if the world champion takes it. The other option was to go with the king to f8, like this but uh, it somehow feels really strange to have this king here with almost no squares that you probably have to take this knight sooner or later because it's just boxing this king just too much and well white could have ideas like taking on b5 trying to open the a5 in case if black takes with the pawn well rook a7 threatening nothing less than checkmate with the rook on f7 of course it can be more or less easily stopped with, for instance, bishop b7, but the position is still uh, uncomfortable for the king and probably you have to take uh, uh, finally with with the bishop and, well, it will come with the tempi, you have to move the king again. So it probably didn't make that much sense to go to f8, although the computer doesn't think there is that much difference immediately, but positionally it doesn't have to be too correct. So, yeah, Carlson just takes and says okay I'll try to cope with this dark square weaknesses around my king he takes on a4 he has to look for counter play for initiative to try to well uh, have uh, some game of his own he opens the b file attacking b2 and an ant defense with rook a2 now a3 he gives the pawn back b takes closes uh, the a file for the white rook which is not bad and place knight f d7. Okay, the position is interesting. I mean, um, black has some weaknesses around his king, but uh, white has a couple of pieces which, I mean, what is the rook doing on a2? Not that much, but Anad is going to find, nevertheless, some interesting attacking ideas here, starting with the natural looking f4. He feels the weakness of the king, uh, the opponent king, and he's, he tries to open the position as much as possible. He has the bishop pair, he wants to coordinate well his pieces to attack. a5 is played here to by Carlsen. Um, okay, a4, knight to b3 could be an idea trying to get a passed pawn for instance. Uh, of course black has to look for counterplay. Rook to f1, f6 tries to hold the position on the king side but f5 here. Uh, I mean, th the first side it could be natural, as it looked to me, uh, to try to close the 
the king side with the move like g5. I, I guess amateur players would think about this a lot, saying, well, there is not that much attack going on any anymore. But the su computer suggests knight h5, a very interesting and curious move, with ideas like h4, definitely opening this up, or even um, some dames, I mean, black could should be careful about moving his pieces as sacrifices on f6, then taking on g5 could be happening, possibly. So it may not seem like that, but the position looks uh, rather dangerous, uh, is rather dangerous for black here. So g5 was not played. Um, Carlson played knight to d3. Bishop takes here. C takes queen to d1. A move I assume is uh, bound to make kind of a way of penetration for the white queen through the light square someday. Maybe, of course not now, but maybe through g4 or if the move is mm, of this pawn is removed through h5. Also, this diagonal is available once again. Carlson plays rook e7. His position is uncomfortable. Probably not that bad yet, but not comfortable certainly. Now look at this rook on a2, which is not doing, was not doing that much. Well, now it's doubled on the f-file. Good achievement. Uh, whenever this is opened, well, the, the the absolute control of the f-file could tell a lot. Rook f7, and now queen takes on d3 taking the pawn here. Knight to c5 with the tempi of course, queen f3, just piling up the pressure on this king side while the tension is in the air. Whenever this gets open, uh, good luck defending this king. Um, bishop a6 feeling very natural of course, uh, but the computer doesn't like this move. Um, I mean you're attacking a rook of course, um, improving your bishop once again, I mean this bishop has moved already lots of times, going to b7, back to c8, now to a6. Struggling to find a good uh, place. But here the competitor doesn't like it and Anand, uh, well Anand certainly did like this move for him of course. Because he goes for the attack. He sacrifices the exchange on f1 and goes queen to g4. Carlson tries to close it so far with g5 but keep pushing h4. Well. Black took, rook takes, but this king is definitely lots of compensation for white. Uh, of course you cannot take, that's a pin, so queen to d7, h takes, f takes. Okay, this pawn is not going anywhere soon, so taking it right away. I mean, wouldn't be that bad, but after king to h8, uh, you have to get away uh, from, from the g-file because the other rook is coming to g8 so Anand doesn't take it right away he goes to h5 uh, preparing the capture king h8 has to be played sooner or later and now f6 it was his idea the rook defense from behind now we're going to check to check probably with the bishop and well there is tons of compensation for white and well white probably is uh, already winning here with this dead attack as he's coordinating very well all his four pieces. Rook to g8, of course preparing uh, mm, to give the material back, bishop g7, Carlson takes with the rook, f takes, uh, queen takes here, was played, yeah, queen takes. Now the knight go goes to the supreme and extraordinary f5 square attacking the queen, queen g6 and Anand was very happy to go into this end game as he has clearly the, v the advantage here 97 is a key move uh, completely uh, breaking this position attacking the rook which uh, basically cannot be protecting without dam damaging the position even more so Carlsen gave away right away the, the exchange here I mean if you go to g7 with the rook well thank you for the checkmate and if you go to uh, h6 and again check king here and we go with the, uh, the rook say to c8 or a8 we have at least the threat of winning the exchange again with knight f5 check apart from that well the king isn't uh, feeling that comfortable at all so 
the check is there, uh, the rook is going to keep harassing this poor black king, so probably it was there was not much to do here, so king g7 was played by the world champion knight takes king takes and now well we have an absolutely winning position for Anand despite the legendary defensive skills and endgames skills of the world champion of Magnus Carlsen uh, after a couple of moves uh, rook f8, a4, c4, h5, king f2 Magnus just gave it up, resigned uh, as well black is going to be deprived of an, any serious activity very soon and white's material advantage will tell uh, not that uh, I mean easily for this level at least so there it goes yet another defeat for the world champion really shocking tournament so far for Magnus Carlsen who's confirming uh, this tournament is uh, probably the worst we've seen him playing for years for lots of years they were looking up uh, for something um, some precedent here for for such a horrible start for the greatest tour play of the of our times at least he has uh, just half a point out of four so far well let us see what happens in the second part of the tournament thanks for watching